Hello everybody and welcome back to Games for Dads and yep it's that time again for another super cool Cards the Universe and everything deck review. Okay today we are looking at one of my favorite cards it's another Goatman deck and this time it's Space Goat League deck. I love this deck it's been doing pretty well this week. Um, I've been trying loads and loads of different decks this week because there's loads of energy. I'm trying to be a little bit creative because so many people just playing the same boring decks at the moment. So Space Goat League Deck Code 6DCN87. If you fancy copying, copying, excuse me, I need to speak properly, copying this deck. Um, so let's have a look. We've got nine space cards and we've got nine history cards, which makes the Goat Man work. And as an added bonus, it also makes Planet X really good. So first card up, no surprise, is Planet X. It's a mythic, quite a big, heavy deck to build this one, but it is worth it if you can build it. Uh, nine for 82. Haven't used Planet X for a long time, but on the play, if your deck has nine or fewer space cards, well, we've got exactly nine. Your space cards, wherever they are, gain plus 14 permanently. And if your deck contains exactly four space cards, give them an additional 14 until played. So we're going to give each of our nine space cards 14 permanently every time we play Planet X. Like I said, massive energy. So I've gone with this big beauty. 12 for 140 Godzilla. On the return, this card gains plus 20 permanently. Amazing card, Godzilla. Next card up, interesting one. I'm sure you know this one, Terminator. 10 for 100, limited legendary card on the draw. This card gains plus 40 permanently. So he's really 10 for 140 at the start. And on the return, if it's the last turn of a round, this card costs minus two permanently. That is good old Terminator. I've gone with Andronoma or Andromeda. Andromeda, there we go. <laughs> 9 for 88, another limited legendary card. On your draw, your space cards in hand cost minus three this turn. He's a big heavy card, 9 for 88. But the minus three will definitely help us going forward. Next card up is a fusion. Let's have a look. Supernova. Supernova. A nine for 85. So another big heavy card. On the draw, your space cards in hand cost minus two until played. So with Androm Andromeda and Supernova, we are going to be saving ourselves loads of energy on our space cards. That's pretty good. Uh, both of them are cards in hand. Supermassive Black Hole, no surprise, because we are playing space and non-space cards. Uh, on the return for every non-space card in your deck, which is 9, give your space cards wherever they are, plus 3 until play. So that's 9, 18, 27 extra buff for all our space cards, wherever they are, until played. Amazing card. Super Massive Black Hole. Eris, I quite like. 8 for 79, another big card. On the draw, your space cards, wherever they are, lose minus 10 permanently which is not so good, but then on the return, your space cards, wherever they are, gain plus 20 permanently. So your nine cards are going to get an extra 10 permanently when you return Eris. Starshade. I haven't used this one for a while, but it is quite a cool card. It is another limited legendary. Help us if somebody's playing Identity Theft. Oh my word, but never mind. Eight for 76. Are on the play, five random opponent space cards, wherever they are, lose minus 20 power for two turns. And I've run into quite a few boxing decks. So Starshade has been pretty useful. And what's really good about this card, on the return, if your deck has five or more space cards, well, you know we've got nine. Five of your random non-space cards, wherever they are, gain 15 until play. So that's a nice little kick there from Starshade. And then the last space card, probably gone over the top, really, with our energy consumption because... I'm ending up with 50, 60 energy, um, which is far too much. So you can probably tweak some of these cards, maybe put in that HD, blah, 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 number, whatever it is card instead of this one. But he death of the universe, your cards, wherever they are, with seven or more base energy, cost minus two for two turns. And how many have we got with seven or more? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we got 12 cards that hit. So I'd probably keep heat death in and maybe swap out supernova for another high scoring space card that might work quite well anyhow uh, energy cost minus two for two turns and your cards wherever they are with four or less energy cost plus two for two turns don't think we've got oh we've got test judo so that's the only card that's going to cost two extra energy we can afford that 
So move on to our history cards. Here he is, my favorite goat man, seven for 54. He looks just like me, that picture. If you wonder what I look like, I look exactly like the goat man. On the play, if your deck is exactly nine cards from any album, those cards, wherever they are, gain plus 14 until played. Well, we've got nine history and nine space. So that works really well. You know what? I think there's another space history card. I need to check that out. Um, maybe add that into that deck. Let me know in the comments if there is. I think I may have missed the cut here. Anyhow, keep moving on. El Dorado. Like I said, I was a little bit worried about energy. I don't know why, because this deck has far too much energy now. 7 for 75. It's another mythic card. On the play game, plus 4 energy for 3 turns. And then I've gone with Zengi the Emperor. So I'm not playing a locked deck. As you know, my little tactic with this guy is to play him on the third turn of each round. Uh, and you will lock up your cards, unlock them straight away, and you will get 25 on each card until play. So a nice little buff there from Zendi the Emperor. Really good. And then I've gone with Shinigami. Obviously, lots of people playing at big, high-scoring decks. You should know Shinigami by now. And with the reprint of Shinigami, I think everybody's got him now. So he is... Used to be quite a valuable card. Now he is one of the cheapest cards in the game, I would have thought. Cheapest chips, as they say. Uh, Tessuzo, great card. 3 for 27. On the return, your cards, wherever they are, gain plus 48 power and cost plus 3 energy at this round. So super, super buff there from Tessuzo. We can definitely afford that this week. No problem. And Joan of Arc, I quite like that on a high energy week. 8 for 93, so it's a good powerful card. And on the draw, a random card in your hand gains plus 55 power until play. So very useful if you are trying to build up some big high scoring rounds. I've also gone with Identity Theft. You should know that one. That's your opponent's legendary cards, giving you four. Iron Maiden, I'd like a whole card. I couldn't find a good whole card, so I went with the Iron Maiden. I just hold him. He just chips away at your opponent's. Oh, at the start, an opponent's random card in hand loses minus 25 this round. And a random card in your hand gains plus 15 this round. So I quite like that, really. And on the return for every round completed this game, gain plus one energy permanently. So, yeah, really useful card. Like I said, I do like Iron Maiden. I used to use it all the time when I first started playing. Um, but I haven't really made that many decks with Iron Maiden lately. And then the Long Sword, because we've got so much power, he works really well. 5 for 50, play him in the middle, uh, slot between any two cards, your opponent loses minus 100 power this turn. That's awesome, so basically you are going to knock off some power. And on the return, your weapons of choice, which Long Sword is, wherever they are, cost plus 4 until played. We can definitely afford that, so I wouldn't worry too much. So that is the deck goat. That is the space goat. I'm sure there's another space history card. What is it? Somebody let me know. I'm sure there's one. Uh, deck code, as I said, 6DC N87. Oh, Lionox Locks. Let's go and play you. Popped up there. Don't know who you are, but we have accepted your challenge. Or not your challenge, but you came up as looking for a game. Nice deck sleeve and really nice deck back there, Linux. Linux Linux. Lino, li, Leon Locks, Leon Locks maybe. Okay, Space Goat, show us what you can do. We're a little bit tight on energy right at the beginning. Oh, I think I don't want to play Iron Maiden. Um, what well, shall we? No, I don't. I'm gonna hold it and play two cards. I think. So this is probably the only time we will struggle with energy. We're just a little bit unfortunate there, and um, we didn't get any of our energy saving cards but we did get godzilla but el dorado's out now so that's going to give us a bit more energy so we should be fine at going forward we're only 89 behind there is shinigami and there is the goat and there is planet x so i'm going to play those three cards keeping hold of zendi the emperor and iron maiden as long as i can is he playing a whole history deck here that's cool i didn't actually have a look good man oh test you though nice deck <coughs> well, you've played Iron Maiden. That's interesting. That is interesting. Somebody asked me the other day if the deck you play has any impact on um, who you play against. Well, not really. Sometimes it can if you end up looking for someone for a match. But I just saw him pop up and I don't know. Interesting one. So 269, Supernova, Eris and Zengdi the Emperor. 
not very good at the moment. Well played, Leon Locks. Leon Locks. Interesting deck. So Zendi locking up our two cars, unlocking straight away. That's good. So now we can start playing. We've got Identity Theft to go. Be interesting to see. He should be quite a good hit. He's got quite a few legendary cars so far. And these space cars are really going to buff up massively. So let's do Supernova. Not Supernova. Supermassive, I should say. 36 from Identity Theft. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And he is playing Espionage as well. Great deck, actually, Linux. So this would be good to see if Goatman gets through this. We've got a 155 lead. We've got Terminator there. I'm going to hold him, maybe. Jonah Fark, who are you going to hit? Oh, and Romana, that's good. Let's sit until play. That's so good, actually, Jonah Fark. So you don't have to rush and play the card that you did hit. But that time we wanted to. 4 4 1. Oh, we've got of Kiev. Nice card. Okay, we are quite comfortably in the lead. We've got Terminator to play. Let's see what comes around. This deck is really good. I do like Space Goat. In fact, I like any deck with Goat in it, to be honest. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, long sword in the middle. And a Godzilla making another appearance. Four six one minus a hundred for them. Oh, that's a shame. Your espionage cards taking a bit of a beat in there. He would have had four eight eight, but he ended up with three eight eight thanks to long sword. But even with the four eight eight, we would have still easily got through there. So three eight six round win makes it one one. So this deck is good. I mean, you don't have to worry about too much really. Uh, the order doesn't matter too much do like to hold Iron Maiden, but again, it's not the end of the world if you do have to play it. But if you can hold it, hold it for the whole game and just get them around or your cards around. Look at that energy, plus 40 already out of 60 and 28 to come. So we're burning energy, actually. So definitely, definitely you can take out one of those energy saving cards. So what are we doing here? We are 118 behind. Uh, there's Shinny, Supernova and oh, Eris should get round really uh this is a tough one actually we've got four cards that we might want to play which should we go for shinny Eris, and a planet x i think four seven two come on put us in oh shinny versus shinny oh we hit shinigami oh he hit our oh, Eris. so unfair seems to always happen every time i play at shinigami i hit the opponent shinigami card and they hit my biggest card or second biggest card there. Okay, one, nine, eight behind. That was unfortunate. So if he'd hit something else, we might have been a little bit closer. But we might struggle here. We can get a big score. Um, so it is turn three. So Zengdi in the end. Five, three, three, four, eight, seven. Let's do that one. I think we're going to lose. Yeah, that was a good move. I don't think we could have caught him. Six, oh, eight. Nice score. Okay, we are two, one down. Those cards are going to lock and unlock. That will give them another 25 each. Iron Maiden's building up nicely. We can use Iron Maiden right at the very end. Both of us have got similar energy, actually. So no problems with energy. So Identity Theft was plus 36, wasn't it, on each card? So that's pretty handy. There is that Starshade card. Do like that. Um, should we play it now? Yeah, 468 plus the 36 on each card from Identity Theft. 576, oh, that is massive. And we will get those two big cards back right at the very end. So that's nice. If we do get to, or oh, we have to get to round five if we want to win. Okay, let's have a look. Joan of Arc, Longsword. So Longsword is now up to nine power or nine energy. We can definitely afford that though. No problem whatsoever. 429 minus 100 off his cards. Oh, his three espionage cards. They're going to get 40 buff there, but that 100 keeps us well comfortably in the lead. So we should make this 2 2. We are nearly 300 points in front. We've got Godzilla and Iron Maiden starting to get quite powerful. I think I should keep Godzilla. Um, Goatman, we want to get round. El Dorado. And uh, what should we play? Terminator, I guess. 415 and 300 he needs 700 don't think he's going to get that no he doesn't identity death's going to give him a nice buff though 40 great deck thank you leon have you just noticed 
It is my Goatman Space Deck or Space Goat League Deck, if you fancy having a look. Okay, here we go. The final round it is 2-2. Two, two. We should have our cards in a good order. Perfect Tessudo and Shinigami exactly where we needed them because Shinigami and Tessudo later on would be useless. I think he's got Shinigami again as well. I see. Oh, and Tessudo. Oh, this is close. <laughs> this is really close. Wow, unfortunate. With our hitting again. Oh, my word. Okay, well, at least we hit the same cards this time. But we are sickly behind. I'm not too worried. Because look at Godzilla and look at Iron Maiden and look at these space cards. So he has got a handful of history. We have got four really strong space cards now. So let's put them out. We've got loads of energy. 644. Four. I'm liking that. That is really good. We're still going to get. Oh my word. I spoke this soon. What a score. What a score. 122 behind. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting about 400 from you, Leon. Okay, we've still got some massive cards there. I think we can get another 700 pointer here. Um, now, is Identity going to be the third biggest one? Obviously, Godzilla. And I made an 801 and 36 from me. So, eight, just short of 900. No, over 900. 36 isn't it per card oh well that was quite easy in the end 909 on the final turn i wasn't sure whether to play identity death there or the heat death of the universe but i think we've got a few more points playing um identity death. anyhow that is my space goat deck hope you like it hope to see you all again soon we've got loads of really cool christmas decks coming up starting tonight i believe yeah tonight uh, yeah um starting our christmas festive season countdown but in the meantime look out for our live stream we're doing a 19 deck challenge over the weekend and in the meantime have fun take care and we'll see you all soon bye